The following program is for adult audiences only. This is... This is... Eric and Gord, what if we're right? Live, right now. Are you ready? Find, find and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Well, hi there. Happy Thursday. It's March the 12th, 2020, and I'm Eric talking at you once again from Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, where what if we just tell Hillary Clinton that the coronavirus is going to testify against her? That'll make it disappear pretty quick, won't it? Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Hello, Gord. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I am doing, oh, I'm alive. I'm okay. Hello. That's, that's all that matters. You missed you missed my intro. Um, I didn't. I'm sad because I, I, I intros and titles of the shows are my two favorite things. So I'll I'll give you the basic gist of it. I figured out uh, the ultimate solution to the world's problems. Just fucking tell mm-hmm. the world that uh, the coronavirus plans to testify against Hillary Clinton. It'll disappear in no time. <laughs> That's 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 actually true, right? <laughs> uh, no guest on the show. Right. Welcome, uh, listeners who are listening live on Spreaker dot com. Phones are open as always. Uh, live chats open six zero four six five five nine six three zero. Um, no guest tonight. I had to reschedule because life got in the way. But I'm almost happy about that because. Uh, just before I get to my shout-outs, uh, it's been a long time since I've introduced one of my personal theories into the show. It's been a really long time, actually, and I, I came up with one last night, and I'm very excited to talk to Gord about it. Uh, before I do that, i got to say hi to Mike at Pit Lane Parlay. Uh, I think race car driving is going on with or without coronavirus, so everyone check out Pit Lane Parlay on Apple Podcasts. Uh, check out our friends Alex and Tom at the You Suck Podcast Network uh, on Podbean. They got their three big shows over there. They got the uh, bar fight, the superhero bar fight, and a couple others. I don't think they're calling it Thor's Kin anymore, but really awesome shows. Check them out on Podbean. And I want to say hi to my our a new friend to the show, Jeff Davis. Uh, they're in Nashville, Tennessee. He's got an amazing podcast called the functioning De- functionally dysfunctional show and it is one that i have found myself listening to as much as i listen to me and gord and that's saying a hell of a lot that so, says a lot hi to those guys and hi to you guys thanks for listening tell a friend um and uh tell your family and uh, maybe head over to facebook or instagram or twitter give us a like give us a follow and uh, there could be a T-shirt in your future. We don't know whose T-shirt, but somebody's. It'll be. Uh, <laughs> it'll be I can even guarantee it'll be clean at this point. <laughs> that's new. <laughs> that, that is that is brand new. Actually, that's a, that's a big fucking deal right there. Yes, yeah, science. Um. So, before we get to news, uh, as I said at the top. I used to always have a theory that I would bring onto the show uh, uh, observations and stuff. I haven't done that lately. We've been so bogged down with guests and that I've just adored. But uh, something I noticed, and I noticed this with a uh, my mother's husband's son, who um, I asked him to to do some math for me, and he pulled out his iPhone and he was just like, "Siri, add this up." And I just realized, uh, now I use it as one of my sayings on the show and just in life. I I often say, you know, just do the math. And I've realized people don't do the math anymore. And, you know, you you let your phone do the math. But in in the more philosophical sense, uh, people don't just stop to do the math anymore. Everyone judges you on so quickly. Uh, I said it to Gord this afternoon. You're only as important as your last status update, right? Nobody... uh, People, people don't take the time to look at you and, and do the math on you. That's how you get jobs o- online and how um, it's just the way we judge each other now. 
Mm-hmm. And it's uh, the the example I brought up to Gord uh, about people not doing the math. Um, really good example is when you're on the highway and you go blowing past a guy and you honk at him and you speed by him and then you both end up at the same red light 50 feet ahead. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't do the math on that. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it happens in life, and it's recently happened to me uh, that in my current living situation, uh, I was given a very hard, fast deadline. You got to get out on this date, and it was to elicit uh, my my begging. Basically, it it was to mm-hmm. feel superior and go, oh, now he's got to beg, and he's got nowhere to go, and he's gonna. He's going to offer this and do that. And and they didn't do the math. They didn't look at my past <laughs> history and go, okay, what does he usually do when when things get tough? And what I did was I procured additional funds. I, I set up a place to stay. I borrowed some money from Gord knowing that I could pay it back. I put myself in a position where, yeah, I can go on this date and it's going to be just fine. And I told them that, and they were shocked and disappointed. And then it came around, as it always does, that they've fallen on some hard times. And knowing my current situation, they they asked to borrow some money today. <laughs> and I just thought, you, you didn't really do the math on the kicking me out, did you? <laughs> because I had already set these wheels in motion before they did that, um, because that's what mm-hmm. I do. And That's right. Now they're asking for a favor after trying to put me in a horribly uncomfortable position and make me kind of cowtail to them. Now that they're in a situation where they need help and they know I can offer it because uh, they didn't do the math. Now, how do you think that that uh, offer is going to go now? <laughs> you know, oh, uh, well, you're doing OK. Can we have some grocery money? <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> How do you think this is going to go for you right, right about now? Maybe you should have done the math. Um, <laughs> this is why you always carry the one. Right? And I mean it in, in the literal sense. Fucking do the math. <laughs> this is why you're supposed to learn math. Like, it's not so you can fucking do math. It's so you can do the math. You know what I mean? You... you, you do the math. Always do the math. Uh, it'll get you mad, just miles ahead of the game. Um, and this is why companies are coming around to that a college degree might not be the be-all, end-all of your qualifications. Maybe the guy with no degree uh, is ten times better at the job. He just has a, an an aptitude for whatever it is. Uh, to, you got to look at people and you got to do the math. It, it's um, it's lacking because we judge everybody on, like I said, it's instantaneous. It's your status update. It's your fucking last Instagram post. That's how we judge people. We don't we don't look at them and, and do the math. You know what I mean? Uh, yep, absolutely. And, and it's, it's just become such a, a detriment to people. And sorry, <laughs> guess what? You, you didn't do the math on me. <laughs> We're we're in some trouble. So that was just kind of my my sort of outlook on on everything lately. You gotta you gotta stop and do the math, and and I think that's kind of the why I'm winning right now, and and some people aren't. And you know, I I say I'm winning. That's obviously relative to where I was a month ago, but but for everybody, I think you gotta take some time, slow down a little bit. Do the math. <laughs> um, I actually, um, I, sh- I showed uh, my mom your, uh, the, th- the thing you wrote. And oh. uh, um, I read it, well, basically I, I read it out to her and she's like, as, as soon as, as soon as you, as soon as it said that they sat, they sat you down and then they changed their tune <laughs> completely. <laughs> my home goes, she goes, I've never met Eric, and even I would know better. <laughs> <laughs> and then continued after I finished the whole thing. She's like, 
he is a really good writer. I'm like, oh, I know. She goes, why doesn't he, like, you know, write? I'm like, he does. He is technically. Be, uh, he's published. I said, so I started sort of feeling her in on some stuff, and she's like, like he's really good. Like, she was blown away with how with the, how well you had everything worded. And, Why, cause thank you. I might be able to say the same point, but it sure as fuck won't sound that nice. <laughs> on, on that note, did you, did you get through part of that story yesterday, at least the uh, conversation? Okay. The- um, I, I, I read the conversation, and then I went back and I went to reread it because, I keep in mind, I haven't slept in two days. Yeah, that- so I'm a little delirious to a point right now. Um, uh, my my boss pulled me offline at work today um, because, uh, well, basically because of what happened at work yesterday. And, um, and what we're he talking saw me about, just ladies mistake. and gentlemen, real quick while <laughs> yeah. while Gord works it out, is I wrote a short story uh, over two years ago now uh, called "The Only Bad Thing That Ever Happened at the Bourbon Hotel." It's uh, it was published last year. Um, it's being optioned by Amazon as a Kindle-only uh, release, which I'm still not 100% comfortable with. But at the moment, you guys can find it at noahwriting.com. You just go to noah, N-O-A-H, writing.com, and look up the only bad thing that ever happened at the Bourbon Hotel. And it's my first published piece of literature. And uh, believe it or not, the UBC Museum of Anthropology is introducing it into their curriculum. Um, they would like to study it because of uh, just the, the nature of this story. So that's just a short story I wrote, and uh, it's out there for you guys to read. If you want to check it out, I would love to hear your feedback on it. And it is utterly fascinating. Um, I haven't, Like I said, I haven't had a chance to finish reading the whole thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I it's it's up on my computer and like I said, I started rereading it again because uh, I remember like, I got way to the end. When I got down to the end, I'm like, wait a minute. Did I actually read this far or did I, you know what I mean, blank out part of this? So I got to go through this a second time to make sure I caught every bit of it because I was just really blown away by some of the shit. It's, of how you do explanations. It's it's pretty impressive. It started out with the conversation with God. It, it, I was writing it as a play uh, initially. I wanted it to be a a, um, a two-person, one-scene, one-set uh, play. I was thinking maybe for the Fringe Festival. And then when the conversation was all said and done, it was kind of too short for the play. And then I was like, I should... I want to know the backstory to this. So I, I wrote everything on either side of that conversation after that conversation it all it was all a second thought and you I'll, know i'll tell you if ahead. you get through the story i'll give you guys some insight if you get through the entire story um the the suicide scene that takes place at the end of the story i wasn't sure how to write that because i've never uh, committed suicide <laughs> uh, so I actually acted it out. I went, I did everything that takes place in that scene. I went to uh, Crab Park in Vancouver and found an area that looked like the one I had described in the story. And I went and I acted out that death scene by myself in the freezing cold water wow. to, so that to help me write it. So uh, it's yeah. it's very emotional. Uh, for me to read and it's it's very it's written quite uh emotionally because I did experience except for the dying part I experienced uh the rest of it so it was a very it was a very emotional story to read uh for obvious reasons it's semi autobiographical but it was a lot of fun and I don't know why over the years I've never thought to show it to Gord but I, I yeah I'm, yeah and I like I said I'm I'm going to be diving a little more into this one, uh, into that, because, well, as of the last, you know, um, I guess mainly about the last couple of years, I've been changing my tune about religion in the sense of instead of me viewing it as a 